Hey folks, in this video, we're gonna be revisiting the Live Score app because of the numerous comments and the gracious generosity from the people over at Live Score app. So let's go. Hey folks, AG CEO here. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, thanks for stopping by and on this channel. We focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you like what we're doing here, consider becoming a patron or a YouTube member. Links are in the description. So granted, this is not directly related to media ministry, but this whole thing started from media ministry on a way for our media ministries to go out and support our youth in our church and whatever type of sporting activities that they have. And I came across this app called Live Score App, which allows you to do different type of scoreboards and all this other stuff like that. Now, um, a lot of y'all liked that video. Um, a lot of people said they had some questions about how I used it and I didn't answer a few questions. So I hope to go through and revisit this video um, to answer a lot of those questions. Now, the other thing that I am so thankful for is Christian, the owner of the company that makes Live Score app, reached out and as a way of saying thank you because of the review, is giving me a license to give away to one lucky person. So before I even get started, make sure you leave a comment in this video and I will randomly pick somebody who's in this comment to get a license to this score. I mean, to this app, the Live Score app, um, provided by the company that makes it. They also have provided me with a professional license, so I have full access to test out all of the other features. So please let me know after this video, also in the comments, or this could be your comment as well, what other items you would like me to go over here. So what we plan to do, um, there'll be timestamps so you can jump to certain um, aspects of the application, but we're gonna be revisiting the app, going through everything, and then linking it to vMix, I believe. Hopefully I can do it in vMix, um, as well as OBS, and hopefully answer some of the questions that didn't get answered or I saw in the comments. So let's go over to our desktop. All right, as you can see, here is the live score app. Um, we have the full access to everything here. So we're going to go, I started off with football. So that's what we're going to start with. All right. So a lot of people had some issues with this whole thing. So let me go ahead and remove everything so you can see how we had this. All right. So let's go through everything first. So we're gonna go through file. Obviously you can save a profile, start a new game. Going to a new game will take you back to the main menu so that you can go and pick a different sport. Edit, you can go to your settings and let's just go through each one. So in settings we got here, we have our general settings. How do you want this to show your game clock, your shot clock? Do you want to show your grid layout? So if I uncheck that, obviously now you're not gonna see anything. I like to keep the grid just so I know where my stuff is in relation spatial um, spacing of where I place everything. All right, we have audio library that if you had this linked to pull in audio, it could actually send um, any audio that's built in or you could add your own. So if you wanted to have a shot clock alarm or um, a quarter alarm or sound air horn or something like that, you can put that here. You can put whatever voices in here, any other sounds that you want. You can pick your output device, your default one and everything like that. Um, like I said, you can add new ones here. In our user layouts, you can, in this one, the professional one, I can actually build my own type of score. I can select the sport that I want it to be for. What type of thing is it? Is it a lower third? Is it a scoreboard? Where are the files at? What are your names? And then you have input scenes. This is some of the other features that are now, um, some more features that are enabled. So if we start at the bottom, the X keys is kind of like a stream deck, but it's more um, coded for this to where you can have 
set up the X keys to be linked to any feature inside of this app in any way, shape or form. So like you can have it every single command that's inside of the live score app. You can make it something. Which honestly, maybe down the road, I will probably use that way I can get away from having to have an iPad um, when we use this. Um, you also have the Dactronics input, so where you could actually link this to some of the devices that um, that send scores directly to the you know scoreboards. So if you had this, you could actually link this, and then when somebody is monitoring the scoreboard and making changes inside the stadium, it will automatically send this information to your game so you don't have to worry about the score, the fouls, the quarter, the shot clock, anything. It will pull that information directly into the system. And then Stat Crew is kind of the same way, but this one will pull down stats so if you have team names, all of the things that are relevant to the game that are being tracked, it will also pull this information in and keep this in record. So you can have this to feed into your possessions, your downs, all that other stuff like that, any aspect of your sport, as, uh, as well as names and everything like that. So you can make this thing pretty much automated to where you really don't have to do anything except for run it. All right, so we have our output rendering. You can output all of this to a image. You can send it out to XML, send it out to a text file. So it all depends. So like if you don't want to stream this stuff, you can send this, like if you use this for OBS or vMix, you could actually send everything in here to kind of like a flat image. And then that way, you can just use that image as a source and once this is updated that file will automatically be updated for you so it's not like it's using ndi or anything like that it's just going to look at an image so we'll play around with that you also have ndi where you want to set your resolution and everything like that you can give it a name um, so i'm going to enable this right now you also have a low performance mode if you're having any type of performance or you're kind of in an issue. Now, when I use this, this was running on the same system. So I never really used this because the system I was using was more than fast enough to handle this. But it all depends on how you need to use this because you know your stuff way better than I do. Um, in my situation, I never had to use low performance mode. Now, the other thing that's unlocked here with the professional license is you have the FTP ticker. This one will allow you to pretty much do uploads to an FTP. Um, and you can also like put this in like a, um, uh, uh, on your a website or something like that. Like I know I run formation sports, our website, we were streaming games for our high schools that hired us to do that. You know, we can send this information to our server if you want to connect it that way or you can use a web app to where it could broadcast like a uh, a widget that shows the score of whatever game that's going on so kind of like a highlights type of thing all right so let's go ahead and save that so as you can see i have turned on ndi because now you see the little banner around here which is set to the resolution of 1080p at 5994 because that's what we selected all right. Now, another thing is it's going to pull. Let's go through. Well, actually, let's go back to our menu here. Let's go to view. And these are little options that you can turn on. We have an external display. If we wanted to turn that on, now you have a dedicated window that you could use to capture if you wanted to, to make this thing easier. And we'll talk about that when we go into um, connecting this to OBS and vMix and stuff like that. You have your game settings. Almost most of these I already have open here. And I'm going to go back and dock this. You have your game settings. So you can put the team's name, a short name, full name, logo, and vice versa. Your quarter time, because again, I am in the football module. 
um, you can change your display text auto time stop everything like that especially if this was linked to your other applications all of this would be propagated and um, pulled in automatically I don't believe the logo would be because obviously I do not have a um, Dactronic scoreboard to fully test all this stuff out so um, but anyway then you can reset the game here if you needed to and all that other cool stuff so now let's go back to server settings when I use my iPad for this to control everything, um, you especially you would want to be on the same network. I used a local network when I did this when I was like on the field because I didn't want to use the school's network in any way, shape or form. So I had a little router and it will pull the IP address of the computer that's running this application and you can set a password to log into this from the app, which is a separate purchase. Um, or you can do a one-time purchase for that one game um, but you can come in here and you can set a QR code to link this as well so like for example if I open up my iPad here and we go to the live score app as you can see the live score app right here I can um, connect to this and I'm gonna use my camera to pull that code here. So I'm gonna sync that, and that was fast. <laughs> and it already is connected, and I think what I need to do is I didn't start my game here. And let's try this again here. Okay. So now, just like that, now I'm connected to the app. So that was really easy. So you could do it that way, or you can just put the password in. It doesn't really matter, either one. I like that, it makes it easy. Now, remote control mode, automatic, manual. I just keep it automatic. Really, I really don't know the difference of what it is, but there you go. All right, so there's our two options right there. Now, let's go to our layout settings. This is what a lot of people had some questions and some problems with of how do you get your scoreboard and your lower thirds. So first, what you need to do is come over here and you need to do a plus. And now it's going to open out your layout gallery so you can pick your scoreboard and see what they look like or your lower third based on the sport that you have selected. So. I can go here through my scoreboards and see which ones they have that you might want to use. I personally use this one a lot just because it had the more, more space when I put my team there. Um, now, if you are making your own, you would they can be listed here as well too because that's why when we went through the creating one, you could actually pick what sport and then it would list that when it filters. Um, you have your lower thirds here, which honestly I have never used, but thankfully, again, because of the updated license, might play around with that because, at least in Virginia, they are opening back up to where we can do some sports. So we're going to be using this stuff again pretty soon. Um, you know, you want to pull this stuff over me personally. I don't like these colors because they don't match what normally I would do. So I, I know I would come in and make some changes. But, you know, you can, let's say, let's add this one here. And then we also want to add our scoreboard. All right. So you want to might want to play around with the location of here and move these around. Um, but I'm going to uncheck this. And submit changes. So it's there. It's just not active. All right, so in here for the scoreboard, you can play around with all your settings. Do you want to show quarters? Do you want to show time? Do you want to show downs and yards, timeouts, line of scrimmage, possession? And if you don't want none of that, then you hit submit changes and boom, there you go. Now, again, when I normally did this, we didn't um, use a lot of this stuff because it was normally a one man show. So we just had to score up um, and then, you know, and um, actually, and then the quarter, that's what we normally would do. But you can change this in any way, shape or form that you want. 
All right, in the same way, if you had your lower thirds enabled, you could change what's being displayed on that as well too. All right, just make sure you have to um, submit changes. Now, if I come in here to our score, we can come in here and edit our colors. And then you can change this to any way you want to. And then you can also save this profile for you so that it can load up. So like I know I have specific colors for Formation Sports when I use this stuff. So I use those colors here and it just makes it easier. All right. Then you can change your zoom here if you want to make this bigger. But again, that's up to you. I really don't need to do this because um, you can do a lot of this stuff inside of your streaming program of choice. All right, so now back to our global settings, our background. Me personally, you can do this as transparent and it'll send it over, or you can do it as a certain color like green and then chroma key it out, but we'll play around with that because I don't think I've noticed it being transparent before and we'll see what this does. All right, and then you can uncheck animations and effects depending on your system you might not want to see the um, effects going on with it and you can turn that off and then it just changes and it doesn't um, fade into the score or tally it up or whatever animation that's up to you all right so let's go back over here to our view now and let's see what else we got we also have our console output down here so it just shows you everything that's going on here showed that I have a client connected which is my iPad and we did our game settings so let's go to the next one we have built-in controls this is the main thing you want to start controlling so this is open a sports control this is what I use the iPad for um, since I don't have a screen necessarily to control this these are all the direct controls to your game so if we want to start our game now it's going to make everything change over and by me changing the game to start now my ipad has pretty much reflected all of these controls that i can do here instead of going through here so like for example i can come down here and say oh the um, um home team let's just use my high school here Hair to tie, and then you see glass. Let's submit those. So now we have names on here, and as you can see, we've updated those. And then if I come over here, now I can see all that information on here. So let's say that hey, we got a touchdown. So I'm just going to hit the touchdown button here for this given sport. And then boom, our score is changing automatically. And I'm doing this from the iPad, or if I came down here in the app and I hit the buttons here, I can do the same thing here. Really cool. All right, and you can control the entire game, change your downs, yards, all this other stuff, lines of scrimmage. Now you can see how tedious this could be, especially if you're a one man person. I'm focusing on a camera and I have all this. With all the other links of the professional license, you can link this to um, the serial connection of the DAC controller, um, Dactronics and everything, and it pulls this information in automatically, which I am really excited about trying. Um, and that's pretty much it from the controls. This works the same way if no matter what other sport that you're doing. But now we already got that, that's cool and everything, but how does all this stuff work with your application of choice. So what I'm gonna do is let me go ahead and switch back to my regular desktop because this was actually being controlled from a different program here. And I'm going to open up my um, scene over here for sports and we're just gonna do this in OBS right now. All right, so let's go ahead and get rid of all this stuff. And we're just going to start from scratch because I actually need to do this anyway. Now, you got to make sure when you do this that you do have 
the NDI function on. And we're going to try, actually, let's go through all of them. So let's do NDI first because I already had it on. I have the NDI source on. So I will call this, um, I'll just call this uh, score app or something like that. All right. And as long as everything is there, everything will show up. And there it is. There's the live score app. And boom, there it goes. Now, my concern is, is it being sent transparently? That I do not know. So let me hook up a webcam here just so I can add simulate some video here. Yeah, this was and I got this camera pointing to the ceiling for some odd reason. So let's do this. And I don't know. This isn't a 1080p camera, so excuse it if I'm not taking a full screen. Oh, and it actually sent the transparency because it's going over NDI, so that's cool. So I can come over here and move this or place it wherever you needed it to be. Now, the other thing you could do, if we went back to the app here, so I can come over here and this is where the zoom will come in. So if I change the zoom over here and make this bigger, and now we come back over here, as you can see, it's changed the score size. You know, and now this all depends. Now you could have resized this directly in OBS or um, vMix, it doesn't really matter. So let's, let me reset this back to its regular size and placement. And as you can see, now it's here. But like I said, you could resize this and do it that way. But as you see, it could be when you blow this up from OBS, it might get distorted, but that's up to you on how you want to do that. But that's it to link it this way. So now we did it this way. Let's go back to the app and let's see. And I'm like I said, I'm remoted into this. And let's see what other ways we can do this. So let's go back to our settings here. And let's do image output. Let me go to our settings and set all that. Output renders. So now we need to make a path for this. And I'm going to set this just on my desktop. And it's going to call be called output PNG. All right, let's save that. And now what we're going to do is let's add a media source. And I believe since it's a PNG, it's going to carry over the transparency, hopefully. So let's set a desktop and let's see. All right, nothing has been made yet. So let's go back to the app. Maybe I'm missing something here. All right, so let, let me see if I can force this. All right, so we made an image here. All right, cool. Oh, duh, AJ, you're actually running this on another computer. <laughs> so that's why it's not working here. Let's minimize this and did it make an image? No, I don't see it. All right, so we sent it and we have image output. Oh, generate output image with a key. Okay, so let me change this. Let me put this on my network instead so I can pull from this file. And let's do this to my network drive instead. I'll do this to critical. Boom. All right, let's save that. And now. 
But I'm just wondering, if I generate this, how often is this generated? So we'll test and see. All right, so now that we got this, let's go ahead and point our image now to that. So we are on our T drive here, and there's our key. Okay, actually, I did this backwards. So we need to generate the image. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's see. Let's come back over here. Output generate the fill. Because if it has, I'm just thinking, if it is doing the transparency, do we really need to do that? I don't know. Anyway, let's set the output image. And see, the transparency is already there. So... I think maybe because we set the background, we don't need it that way. Okay, so all right, so now this is just the image. This should run way easier than anything else. So I'm gonna use the um, the app and I'm gonna change some of the stuff on here to see what happens. Say we make the extra point. All right, so I'm showing this as seven now. And then let's say, let's give glass a touchdown and do send hmm okay so it looks like this is stationary and it's not actively updating this so I'm wondering so as you can see I updated everything here hmm so I guess you would this would be something that needs to be actively pushed each time so if I do generate fill there and then go back to OBS see now the score has been pushed over so I guess I'm just trying to sit back and think if you if you have something slow moving maybe you could do something like that I don't know and as you can see there's the where the app is running in the background um, I guess from here so if I turn this off and then go back to the live score and now I try and change, let's just say, oh, they get, uh, they make a field goal, easy glass. All right, so now with the NDI, it's more active on the fly. Okay, that could work. It all depends. Um, now, another way you could do this is you can capture that window because this one had an output for a external display. So let's see how this one will work. Actually, no, this won't work because I'm on a different system. Um, so I have to. I would need to have this app on my desktop to actually run this. So we'll have to test that at a later time. All right. So that's this. Pretty straightforward. There's really nothing to this. So even if I like started the time, but I'm not capturing time. Let's let's add that back. And let's kick off our time. Let's just turn everything on, shall we? We submit our changes. All right, now as you can see, we have our clock, we have our downs, we have our quarters, we got all that other stuff. So if we just happen to do change the quarter, boom, there we go. And then I can start the clock here. And now our time is going, I can set the time to whatever that's needed. So really straightforward. And I'm bringing in audio here. So if we used any of those buzzer sounds, it would kick off here. Really straightforward, but we can't let EC Glass win. Heritage is better. So we just got two more touchdowns and boom, we blew them out the water. <laughs> All right. So that's really straightforward from here. Now, again, like I said, I do not have access to any of the um, Dactronics links to everything like that, but I do have access to a school. So you never know. We might be trying this um, pretty soon, and I think I would need a... Um, something kind of like this, a... Uh, a serial port to USB, something like this. Obviously, it needs to be a little bit longer than this. This will connect to the controller, and it should send everything over USB. But that's something 
um, like I said, I would have to play around with. Now, let's see if we can do the same thing in vMix here. And in theory, it should be the exact same thing. So let's go ahead and remote back over to our system here. So we're actually going to be using the system <laughs> that I'm actually running this all on. So maybe this is a little bit different now. All right, so I'm not going to add all the other bells and whistles to this. I'm just going to add the basics. So we're going to do add an input, NDI source. Now, since this is the same system, um, I could run itself, but you know, that's fine. This is the same way how I normally would run it anyway. So we're seeing our live score show up. Let's just select that. And boom, there's our score. If we need to come in here and change the position and the size and everything like that, we can do that here. And we need to move this down. Or I can just move it over here and stuff like that. Probably put it down here in the corner or something like that, up and out of the way so it doesn't miss mess up any of the action and that's really it so if i come over here and let's say oh wait a minute here just got another touchdown boom there's our score you know and it just just works straightforward oh wait a minute there was a there was a flag on the play i can hit the flag button right there and everything that's being controlled from the live score app just moves over and no matter what sport it works so that's really cool so let me know thankfully like i said christian at um live score app provided me with a professional license so i have access to everything but also leave a comment in this um video and i will randomly pick someone to get a license from them that was graciously provided by live score app to bless somebody with that so let me know if there are any other things y'all want me to go over and just leave one comment because even if you leave five, 10, whatever, it's only going to filter you um, by um, individual people. So thank you so much, Christian. Thank you so much, Live Score app. I really appreciate it. And again, if you have any more questions about this, please let me know. Really straightforward, whether you're using OBS, vMix, and I didn't use XSplit because I don't have that stuff installed. But any of these other programs that can actually do this, Streamlabs, um, OBS, all these other ones should work. I don't know if this will work. I don't believe this will work with um, like StreamYard or anything like that. But anyway, let me know if y'all have any other questions or some things that you would like me to test out. If you like this type of content, I appreciate a like, consider subscribing, and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. And I want to thank the patrons and our YouTube members for making this video possible. Their name's on the screen right now. And you too can become a patron for as little as $1 a month or a YouTube member for as little as $4.99 a month. And there are different perks and benefits for each platform, depending on whichever one that you choose. But no matter which one you choose, you're helping us train media ministries all over the world. Thanks for watching, folks. This is AJ. We will see you on the next video. Later.